Thank you again. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Biovia and Dassault. Uh, looking forward to this, and um, we're, uh, we're really happy to be the platinum sponsors of this year's event. Uh, so this, this, this talk, um, there we go, the case for managed services in a cloud strategy. Over the course of the last 18 to 24 months and in the cloud environment, much longer than that, there has been a significant increase of inquiries to companies uh, that provide different types of services for strategies around how to incorporate ways to manage a number of different scientific applications. So I thought today would be a great idea to provide a case study of what that looks like uh, and some value propositions, return on investment um, areas uh, for, for driving towards uh, a, a managed service in this environment. So I like to always start these things with a problem statement. Uh, we're working with a VP of research IT in a global biotechnology company that is really in the business of curing things like cancer and other uh, inflammable diseases, et cetera. And you know, when challenged with some of the strategy alignment that these companies have had, they oftentimes get bogged down in the day-to-day -day activities of managing some of these very complex IT organizations, infrastructures, you know, number of scientific applications across their you know, research, development, quality, and manufacturing areas, uh, and hindered you know, with all of those types of, of activities, enabled, uh, unable to, to, uh, to actually go into the innovation side of trying to fix complex things like data mining and things that are actually going to move their, um, their, their drugs faster through the market. So one of the uh, areas that we, that we spoke with, um, with uh, this VP was he was tasked by the CIO of the company to lower his total cost of ownership by 27% of the overall support of these scientific applications so that he could take funds and invest it in some of those innovative strategies like data mining uh, going forward. Uh, but in order to do that, he was very, uh, very clear to ensure that they maintained a level of support and, um, and a level of expertise in those specific scientific applications and also the domain in which they're used. And those two combinations are really critical when an external company is providing resources to support those applications. There are a number of service providers that provide a broad stretch of, um, of different IT application support, but when it comes to the notebooks and the LIM systems and the scientific data management systems, et cetera, it's really important to focus in on uh, folks that understand those applications, that know the domain and the workflows and what they're used, and that was really critical for, for, this, uh, for this decision for this, for this company. And then also, as the company grew, maintain the ability to scale on a global level as the uh, support and inquiries for those types of services um, grew. So, you know, I like this slide. It's really, you know, if you're um, if you're only fixing IT problems, you're missing out on a number of uh, really innovation uh, type activities. And this major uh, biopharmaceutical company, as I mentioned, was really looking to invest a, a tremendous amount of money to try and fix a data mining problem. And they had a number of data silos across the, uh, the different um, uh, functional and uh, cross-functional and disciplinary groups inside the company. Um, they were looking at um, initiatives that, that you know, sort of looked at profiles from discovery science through analytical, through quality and manufacturing. Um, and, you know, they really needed to shift those resources back to that innovation cycle and look for ways to see how a managed services provider could take the day-to-day -day activities off of the traditional IT group um, and kind of built an entire strategy around that. So, and this isn't just this company that's taking this, uh, that, that's talking about this, but we've got a, a lot of um, business challenges that have been uh, discovered and with companies working on inefficiency, for example. So looking at ways to really maximize, you know, the, the digitization of workflows in laboratories, et cetera, um, dealing with a number of complex silos uh, across quality and manufacturing. And, you know, the, the landscape has changed, especially for companies like, like ours. We used to work with companies in providing services uh, for the informatics world. And in the room, those decision makers were research or IT, uh, maybe somebody from the business. Now, the, the landscape includes 
folks representing the SAP organization, ERP organization, product lifecycle management organization, in addition to IT, in addition to the research folks. So now we're forced with helping companies really think about how do we architect these types of solutions from the decisions that they make very early on all the way through to managing that as a service when you're moving from CapEx to OpEx. And really trying to drive the costs associated with supporting those types of things uh, down. Uh, so that's been an interesting challenge um, as uh, more and more of these companies have uh, really expanded the landscape and how they make those decisions. And then lastly, of course, providing a managed service, helping you know, companies get products to market faster, whether it's a drug or a material. Uh, we found that using very sophisticated dashboards and KPIs, we've really been able to drive uh, global efficiency and help with that innovation by providing very variable resources uh, to, uh, to those companies that actually know the, uh, the application. Um, and this isn't just something that uh, our company has heard. You can see that um, from, from the uh, Smart Lab um, report that came out in 2016, there's a lot of focuses and emphasis on you know, a number of different KPIs that folks are trying to track. So why is it a good time to consider this type of managed service provider? You know, this was taken by over 100 laboratory informatics professionals and IT professionals across the industry. Um, and it's not always a all-in scenario. There may be some applications that companies are really near and dear to their heart. Maybe it's an instrument integration portfolio that's very customized or a highly customized application. And in that case, we found that many companies have kept that internal and leveraged other resources to support that, and then taking other applications outside into, uh, into a managed service. But one of the things that's really important to, to, to mention here, as these, these support level agreements, or SLAs, are being developed, what we found is more and more companies are breaking out these into, into different section, sections. So traditional IT will have you know, level one, level two, et cetera, and there'll be a list of applications that um, that are listed in there. And then there'll be another managed services provider that focuses in on the scientific applications, and maybe it's level two and level three. And all of those are then divvied up, and they're asking multiple service providers to come to bid to look at supporting that, such that those scientific applications really get the best support and get the best return on investment and drive the innovation that companies expect from these very complex and, and, uh, and costly in, in, um, investments. So, so keep that in mind uh, as you go down the path of looking for externalizing some of these services. There's not really a one-stop sh shop when it comes to this. You really need to, to think about the partner, what the partner's strengths are, and don't be afraid to, to cut it up into a couple of chunks uh, and, uh, and provide um, uh, so, so, so that you can provide the uh, specific application experience. <clears throat> so a, a couple of you know, other things, I mean, just generic, what is managed services? Um, most of you have, have heard this term in the past. But really what it helps is it helps with predictability. You're going to have real-time real dashboards that show uptime, that show innovation, that show um, any type of, um, of issue that may arise. You're going to have uh, flexibility um, across your enterprise as well. I mean, some applications may be um, a lot more dependent on latency. Their, their productivity might be a lot more dependent on latency. So you need to have a little bit different setup for that type of environment, uh, and, and some others not. Um, uh, we also uh, see um, cons consistency, so how we measure how these applications are run. Uh, we, we can have consistency across your, your corporation. And then lastly, the simplicity, really trying to make this very simple for folks to focus on what's important, uh, driving innovation, discovering new materials, discovering new drugs, and having the ability to rely on a, a provider that has the expertise in those types of applications. Um, some of the other things when discuss, discussing um, you know, what these providers should be focusing on, one of the areas is specialized technical support. And it's critically uh, important to ensure that your managed services provider, as I said earlier, really has the understanding of the application and the domain. The second thing is, as a key part of the cloud strategy, lowering your total cost of ownership has to be a, a key component of it. Uh, so there's always financial metrics that go into these, uh, these decisions. Uh, and then lastly, you know, company innovation. Scientists can focus on really that 
that, um, that initiative in the company, discovering new drugs, et cetera, and then the MSP to provide peace of mind that those tools are running efficiently and effectively and not have to spend an adequate amount of their time or a significant amount of their time trying to fix problems with workflows or um, doing upgrades or doing implementations or validations and things like that um, will really um, help uh, drive the efficiency and the innovation inside the companies. So what does this cover? This is an example of you know, a simple value proposition of what a managed service could provide and some of the applications that you could put into your landscape. This does, like I said earlier, this is not a one size fits all. You may look at laboratory information management, ELN. You may not want to deal with your data uh, in a managed service. That may be too proprietary, so that would stand, uh, stand separately. Um, you may want to include instrument integration as well. Uh, but there are managed service providers out there that really specialize in, in these types of areas, and you can collaborate and, and, um, and partner with some of the larger um, companies that focus on traditional IT to really give the best solution to the academic folks, the research folks, the development and quality and manufacturing folks to ensure they're getting the most value and return on investment from their applications. Some of the uh, summary of benefits, these are fairly self-explanatory, but standardized um, you know, fully um, is, uh, is a really important one, so making certain that you're on the latest versions and making certain that you have um, you know, um, you know, no compatibility issues across the applications, et cetera. Um, we also um, looking at so zero maintenance, right? Really having that peace of mind that these applications are always running, 24 by 7 support, um, you know, 365 days a year in a number of different time zones, having that peace of mind that, that this is up and running. And, and working collaboratively with the vendors to make sure that when upgrades happen, et cetera, they, uh, they are, um, they're happening. No. So in closing, I, I think the, the key point to this is, you know, managed services is really key to all of our organizations. Um, innovation is more important than driving and trying to find different applications and people and folks to, to support all those. Leveraging the right MSP can really um, uh, be a key component of your overall cloud strategy, and it gets us back to focusing on things that are important, like curing illnesses, uh, improving lives, and really maximizing the return on your scientific application investment. So thank you.